The use of a Zeiss slit lamp with an iritis test kit. Adjust the oculars for your eyes. You can add plus or minus if you're nearsighted or farsighted, but most likely you'll want to keep the microscope at zero on both sides and keep it slid in well. The oculars have this focus on a Zeiss slit lamp up to 40x. This is the ABCD iritis test kit and it has an image on the side to help you focus. The iritis test kit can easily be placed in the forehead mount. We're going to be demonstrating the Zeiss slit lamp and use of a Zeiss slit lamp with an iritis test kit to determine the presence or absence of white blood cells floating into the anterior chamber, or iritis. The slit lamp is turned on with a button on the bottom, and that button also has a rheostat to turn it very bright or very dim. <clears throat> we look with an eyepiece. The eyepiece needs to be adjusted for the width between your two eyes, turning back and forth this way, and also, the eyepiece itself can be adjusted for nearsightedness or farsightedness. We recommend, if you see well at a distance, that you set it at zero and make sure both eyepieces are slid in well. <clears throat> the camera, the device on the slit lamp, has magnification on this dial. And as you can see, we can see the beam focusing on the image on the iritis test kit. The uh, focus uh, side to side and in and out is adjusted by the vertical uh, joystick and on a Zeiss the up and down is adjusted with the separate device. It is possible with one hand to go use the up and down and the joystick of the Zeiss. The patient should be set in the chin rest, here's the chin rest here, you can go up and down, so that their eye is at the level of the black line, and that's about where the iritis test kit is right now. Their forehead should be up against the chin rest, and the iritis test kit floats on that uh, chin rest. We can have the beam come in from the left. beam can be moved too far to the right or too far to the left, something that's called sclerotic scatter, but we want to keep that right in the middle. <clears throat> now the iritis test kit is carefully focused on the image of an eye. We can have the beam come in from the left or we can have the beam come in from the right. The beam can be moved too far to the right or too far to the left, something that's called sclerotic scatter, but we want to keep that right in the middle. We can also change the beam to being a blue, cobalt blue beam, or a red free beam from the top. Again, center that. We have a nice wide beam at this point, nice tall beam. We'll make that smaller again. The beam can be rotated. <clears throat> now we'll again let the beam go from a 9 to a 7 
to a five to a three millimeter beam. We will increase the width of that beam and we're going to turn the rheostat up so that it's very bright. Now we're going to move to the iritis test kit right over to the side. Now as we're looking in the iritis test kit we can actually see white blood cells and we're going to increase the magnification. This eye slit lamp, and we will carefully move in so that our focus allows us to see the suspended white blood cell like particles in the iritis test kit. Now you are looking at white blood cells floating in the iritis test kit. This can be seen even more at very high magnification. And we can focus forward and backwards with the joystick on the Zeiss slit lamp. All right, from this point we have the rheostat up, we have the beam width up. Turn it off. The bulb to the slit lamp can be changed in the middle of this housing on the slit lamp. We hope that this demonstration of a Zeiss slit lamp combined with an iritis test kit allows you to evaluate patients better for the presence or absence of white blood cells floating in the anterior chamber or iritis. Thank you.